It's another Mate here with Teacher Jenny. Join me for another topic. And right now, we're talking about writing hypothesis. So I will be um, joining you in how to write your different hypothesis. So let's try to talk about first, what do we mean by hypothesis? Hypothesis, if you are really, really familiar with science, this is commonly used in there because when you say experiment, of course, before we do that one, we will be making our own hypothesis. Hypothesis is defined as normally an educated guess. In statistics, we do not just take in as an educated guess, but indeed, we are trying to have it in an educated guess about our population parameter. So your population parameter comes in now. When you say population parameter, those are the population mean, the population median, the population mode, the population standard deviation, and many others. So those are your population parameter. And hypothesis, this is assumption about those things. So like, for example, when you say here, the average age of senior high school students is 17, this is our hypothesis. When you say hypothesis as well, this needs to be tested whether this is correct or not. Or we can just simply accept this one or reject this one. So that's hypothesis. Now, if you are familiar with parameter and how it does written on or how do you construct a parameter, this is what you normally see under hypothesis. How do we construct that hypothesis? We are to state the measure, the measure meaning to say our population measure in there, may it be an average, may it be the mean, um, the mode, median, standard deviation, and many others. That's the measure. So you will be stating your measure first. So this time, our measure is the average age. And the next one is we will be stating our population. Because way back, if you try to watch over my video on parameter, when you say parameter, this is the measure in which that describes your population. So our population here is the senior high school students. And after that one, we have to have the value for your parameter. So that is how we construct our hypothesis. Now, hypothesis, we have two types of hypothesis that we need to consider. First one is we have the null hypothesis in which you have the symbol for that one as h sub zero. That is the null hypothesis. Now, once you see null hypothesis there, this is normally what we are trying to test about. So once you have your study or research, this is what we wanted to test out, whether this statement can be accepted or rejected or might be, can this be rejected or not to be rejected. So that's null hypothesis. Again, this is the hypothesis to be tested whether to reject or not to reject. This is also taken as, or we are assuming here, that there is no significant difference between the two means. Meaning to say, your population mean and a sample mean, there is no significant difference. Meaning to say, they are the same. So that's null hypothesis. No keywords, because later on we will be determining or differentiating or distinguishing our null hypothesis from your alternative hypothesis, which is another type of hypothesis. We have to make use and consider our keywords here. The keywords for the null hypothesis is, you've got there the word is, that signifies your symbol equal to, and then of course we have the phrase equal to, and we have at most, which is equivalent to the phrase, which is less than or equal to. And of course, we have the, the phrase here, at least, which is equivalent to the phrase greater than or equal to. So those are the keywords. Now, once you see that or those words or that phrase on a parameter, automatic, that will be 
null hypothesis. Don't worry, we will have our distinguishing later on between your null hypothesis and alternative. So let's now continue with your alternative. By the way, this is the symbol. The symbol for your null hypothesis, we have the equal symbol, the less than or equal to symbol, and the greater than or equal to symbol. So let's go to your alternative hypothesis. When you say alternative, from the word itself, you have alternative, meaning to say it's the second choice. So we have here the symbol for the alternative hypothesis as H sub A. Now this is the choice when null hypothesis is rejected. So automatic, once your null hypothesis is being rejected, automatic you are taking in your alternative hypothesis as your correct statement. Now this assumes that there is a significant difference between the two means. So meaning to say your population mean and your sample mean, there is indeed a difference. Meaning to say they are not equal at all. So that is alternative hypothesis. And of course, um, to add to that one, your alternative hypothesis really negates your null hypothesis. Because as what our definition says here, when you say null hypothesis, there is no significant difference. When you say alternative, there is significant difference. So they negate each other. Now, on the keywords as well, they also negate each other. So the first keyword there on the null hypothesis is the word is. So of course, since we're negating, so we will have that one as is not. And then we have the word equal to there. So here we have the not equal to. So see, there is a negation on that one. And then the next one here, and by the way, different also some, some of the problems might have this word as well. Some of the parameter might use this one, different. That is also under the keyword for alternative. And we have here greater than. That negates the um, at most phrase in there. At most meaning to, to say it's less than or equal to. So what negates that one is the phrase greater than. And lastly, we have our less than which negates the word or the phrase there at least or greater than or equal to so those are the keywords for the alternative hypothesis and of course we have the symbol not equal to symbol greater than symbol and the less than symbol in there so that will be for the alternative so let's end Try to determine whether the following parameters are H sub 0 or H sub A, meaning to say it's null hypothesis as H sub 0 or alternative hypothesis as H sub A. So let's start. First off, we have the average income of a Filipino family is less than 20,000 pesos a month. What type of hypothesis is this? Is this null or alternative? So kindly think and ponder there. You may pause the video if you want to and then go back once you have the answer to this question. And this is alternative hypothesis. Now alternative, why is it alternative? Because we're using here less than. Take note on the different key keywords there. That would really help you in starting off with writing the hypothesis and determining your parameter in there as what type of a hypothesis that one is. By the way, the entire statement here is what we call as the parameter. So we will be using the parameter in writing our hypothesis later on. So we have here less than, that's a keyword for the alternative hypothesis. Let's go to another one and we'll see if you are correct. So the other one is the average number of children in a Philippine household is at least four. So what do you think? Is that null or alternative? Indeed, this is null hypothesis. Now, why is it null hypothesis? Because you are using here at least 
Take note, at least that is the keyword for the null hypothesis. So I hope you get that one. So let's try another one. Okay, let's have another one. This time we have de to determine whether the following parameters are null or alternative. So we have here the mean numbers of subjects in first semester of senior high school grade 11 students is 8. What do you think is this? Is this null hypothesis or alternative? You are correct. That is null hypothesis. Null hypothesis because we're using here our keyword, which is is. Next one, let's see if that is if you will get this one correctly still. So we have here the average electric consumption of a household in the Philippines is not 248.1 kilowatt hour in 2015. So what do you think is this? Is this null or alternative? Very good. This is indeed alternative hypothesis because we're using here the keyword for the alternative, which is, is not. So that is alternative hypothesis. So next, we go off for writing our hypothesis. And this time, we will have our problem. And we will be writing off our null and alternative hypothesis. So let's learn how to write it. Now, we have here the problem, the school's record management claims that the average score of the incoming freshmen during the admission test is 73. The teacher wishes to find out if the claim is true. She tests whether or not there is a significant difference between the batch average and the mean scores of students in her class. What is the appropriate hypothesis to be used in this case? So for you to write your hypothesis, you must first off know what is your parameter because we always start our or we always write our hypo hypothesis with your parameter. So you have to spot your parameter first. So in this problem here, our parameter is the average score of the incoming freshmen during the admission test is 73. Why is this our parameter? Because you have your population here, which is the incoming freshmen. This is our population. And of course, since that is our population, the measure here, the average score, which is 73, that becomes our parameter. So in writing your hypothesis here, if you've spotted your parameter, automatically determine whether this parameter is null, null or alternative. If you have that one as null, then go ahead and write that under null hypothesis. If you have that one under alternative, go ahead and write that one under alternative. Now, Looking at your parameter, you are using the keyword, which is is. So that means to say, this is our null hypothesis. So we will be writing this down under our null hypothesis. So this is how we write it. Now, please take note how you are usually writing your null hypothesis in statement form. You will be writing that off, starting off with the name of or the type of your hypothesis, we have this one as the null hypothesis, so we will be writing off H sub 0. Take note, we always start with our null hypothesis in writing our hypothesis, okay? So we have H sub 0, and then you have your colon, the two dots there, that's colon. That will separate the type of your hypothesis and the parameter in there. And then you are now ready to write down your parameter. So we have there the average score of the incoming freshmen during the admission test is 73. So our problem now is our alternative. Now for the alternative, you have to be careful with this one. Other problems, you can simply spot it because there's no mention about those other keywords like less than, greater than, automatic, the standard way of writing the alternative for that one must be not equal to. 
But if in the event that there is somewhere in the problem mentioning about less than, you are to test out whether that is less than that 73, then that means to say that alternative should contain the word less than. If that says greater than 73 along the problem there, somewhere on some portion of your problem there, then you will contain in the alternative the greater than. But since, if you try to look at the next statement there, right after the teacher wishes to find out if the claim is true, she tests whether or not there is significant difference or there is a significant difference. When you say significant difference, that refers to our alternative, right? We had that one in the definition that when you say alternative hypothesis, it assumes that there is a significant difference between your two, some, two, two means. Sorry on the word. So that means to say this is our sign that this one is automatically our, our alternative. Now, when you say significant difference, again, there is the keyword different. Difference is with the or coming from the word different, so automatic, that will become our alternative. And the symbol for that one should be not equal to or the likes of it. So you may have the alternative written like this. So everything will be the same on the null hypothesis except for the keyword. We will be replacing the keyword in there. So we will have there H sub A. That's for the alternative hypothesis. And then we have the colon. And then the average score of the incoming freshman during the admission test is not 73. Take note, on the keyword there, you have is not, is not equal to, different, that will be with your, with the same symbol, not equal to, right? So that is how you write your hypothesis. This is in statement form. Now, another form for writing your hypothesis, this is now in symbol form. This is the shorter version of this one. Now, how to write that one? We are just simply beginning. We start at the beginning on uh, similar to how we write it in statement form. So, we write it with this format still. Only that, for the measure there, we are trying to convert that one into symbols. When we say average score, your average there, that means to say that's the mean, that's similar to your mean, or that's the same thing as your mean. Now, since we're talking about parameter here, this is for the population. So our mean there is the population mean, which got a symbol which is mu. So that is our symbol. Next one is our keyword. The keyword there has a corresponding symbol. The word is here in math is just the symbol equal. And then again, you will be taking in the value which is 73. That same goes with your alternative. You have your average as your mean, the population mean here with the mu as the symbol. And then you've got the keyword which is, is not, that is not equal to. And then we have the value, which is 73. So to put it, them together, symbol now will be like this. That will be your null hypothesis in symbol form. And this will be your alternative in symbol form. So that is how you write your hypothesis. So I hope you're learning something from me today. So please watch out for my next video. My next video will be about... Um, identifying whether what type of test are we having in our problem. And after that one, I'll be making a video for hypothesis testing. So I hope you will watch out for that one. And if you wanted to, you can click on the bell button once you subscribed. But for those who have not yet subscribed, please do subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you will be updated of my latest video. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.